one reason why I stand before you today is because when I was just around 16 or 17 years old back in the Philippines, somebody encouraged me. So I grew up in the Philippines. Uh, there were uh, six of us in the family. Uh, I was the youngest. Uh, my dad worked as a street laborer in the street. Uh, he only finished uh, grade three. My mom is a housewife and she finished uh, second year high school. And so we didn't have much. It was a difficult life and there were many occasions when my, my dad would not receive salary and my mom would say, we have no food. And we have to go to the rice fields and find food somewhere. Um, so when I graduated from high school, I told my dad I wanted to go to college and he just cannot understand the idea. I mean, why would you go to college when you just finished high school? He's, he doesn't speak English very well. He said, isn't it? The word high means high. Why do you want to go higher? You know? He said, why don't you just be a, a tailor like our, your neighbor there, a tailor, and you can get married and just, you know, that's, that's the extent uh, because of the lack of education, not being able to read books. So I didn't get much encouragement, but when I went to Manila, I was able to go to college for a scholarship and I attended the church. I was 16 or 17. I didn't really think much side of what I can do because that's part of who I, I was. But then somehow this uh, regional director who came from Ireland came to me one time and said that, uh, Bermi, I think you have a potential. And sometimes words can be powerful, you know. Once they get incepted or like, you know, planted in, in our minds and they're there, these ideas, and they begin to change. I mean, things are still the same out there, but the way we look at life begin to change the perspective. And I think God is able to work with that, with those words planted in our minds. And, and I begin to look at things differently. Perhaps, perhaps God has something there for, for me, you know. And that has been very encouraging and has begun to change my life. Encouragement is something that is in the scriptures um, and it has been really powerful. And the reason why I want to talk about this topic today, my purpose is, as pastor, they say that one of our goals is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And many times, you know, people ask me, oh, what can I do? I, I, you know, I don't have the strength. I, what can I do? And I said a while ago that uh, my goal is maximum participation, where all the members of the body are involved in the work of Jesus Christ. And uh, one of these work is the ministry of encouragement. A few weeks ago, I talked about prayer. So today, I'd like to talk about the ministry of encouragement, and I want to commission everybody here, everyone to be a member, to be a part of this ministry of encouragement. And why do we do that? It's because God Himself, when we, when we look at the Scriptures, God is a God of exhortation. He encourages people. In, uh, for example, in uh, Hebrews, uh, right, that's uh, Hebrews 3.13, it says, Encourage one another daily. Now this is a message written to us, I mean the Christians at that time. Encourage one another daily? Yeah, this is every day. It's like prayer. As long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So it shows that God understands that we have our struggles and our pain and discouragement and all of this. That's why he said encourage. Otherwise, it's going to be difficult to go through the day without this, this encouragement. So why do we need encouragement? That's a good thing to ask. I mean, 5.11, Hebrews 5.11 also tells us to encourage one another so that we can build each other. Now that's an interesting concept that encouragement, I mean just like I was then young and 16 and somebody dropped these few words in my brain, in my mind and, and then it, I began to look at life differently. You know, things may still be the same out there, but our perspective changes. And it says, encourage one another, Hebrews 5.11, so that you can 
build its other. And I think that's what we, we, and I think what God wants, and that's the, one of the best way to help people grow. You know, working with our mates, our spouse, everybody, children, one of the best way for us to help them grow is to encourage. It's a better teacher than discourage. Right? I mean, it's easy to discourage. What you have done is wrong. You did this, you bad things. I mean, you know, you think it's effective, but that's not as effective as encouragement. It helps people to grow. So I want us, and I think God's desire is for us to grow. I mean, just like the body, we should all mature together. Imagine, you know, the, the, my body is maturing, but my right hand stays as baby hand. You know? <laughs> Uh, it's not a good metaphor, I know, because some of you may say, well, you know, what about staying with baby face? <laughs> <laughs> Metaphors break down at some point, but, you know, the hand is a better picture, right? And it's not normal. So we want us to grow, and that's what, what it says there. So why do we need encouragement? Uh, God, of course, first thing is He did say in the scriptures here that we read a while ago, He wants us to uh, encourage one another. That's, that's God's decision here. And in fact, uh, this is really interesting. The Father, our God, the Father, is quoted rarely in the Bible. But two, two times here, in Matthew 3, verse 15 to 17. And then, you know, you can go and check that in the scripture. My, Matthew 3, 15 to 17. This is a quotation about the Father. And what did the Father say about Jesus? This is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is an interesting thing because in that particular story, the father was speaking, and then there's the dove or the pigeon, you know, presenting, presenting, presenting the Holy Spirit, and there's Jesus. And in this moment where, where the Bible shows the father speaking, it is a word of encouragement. It is actually a more like a confirmation from the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Confirmation that Jesus is the Messiah. Exactly. I mean, all that are involved. And how is that done? It is done by words, right? And, and that is powerful. I mean, for Jesus, knowing that he has to go through to go through a lot of pain and, and suffering, you know, he's going to do, go through that, he knows what's going to happen to him, and to hear from the Father, this is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. No other things can please me, not, not the blood of lambs and bulls and animals, nothing can please God, the only one sacrifice that can truly, I mean perfect sacrifice, that can please the Father is the sacrifice of the Son, Jesus Christ. Right? That's why he said, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. The word well pleased actually is agapetos, which means love. This, this rich, full, deep love of the Father for Jesus Christ. And, and he says, that's my Jesus. In fact, there's another quote in Matthew 17, verse 5, of the Father. Remember in the transfiguration? The Father spoke again in Matthew 17, 5, and he said, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. I mean, again, the same thing. That, I mean, I find that really remarkable. That the words that are the quotes, the Father, are words of encouragement. God is an encourager. And I believe that's why He wants us to be an encouragement and also to be encouraging each other. That's, that's what God wants, uh, what He desires. And, uh, and that's my goal, that's our goal. That the church, our church here, as we are transitioning, will become an encouraging, a warm, friendly, encouraging church. You know, there's a place in the world where there is fresh air, where there are no germs, there's no pollution. Just a nice place, but nobody goes there to live. 
You know why? Because it is very cold. It is called Antarctica. <laughs> Nobody wants to go also in a cold church, right? They want some warmth, you know. Uh, that's why, you know, that's the goal, I think, for the church when there is encouragement. Because when there is no encouragement, when the church is called, the life of, you know, when there is not much love going on, uh, God says, that's not good. You know, He wants that to happen. So, so what is encouragement? So we get to uh, spiritual message, they wisdom, and now encouragement. What is encouragement? It's, uh, it isn't really, you know, I'm not talking about, oh, nice haircut today, you know. That, 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 that's good, that's also good, that's, that's nice to say, but uh, something more. It is uh, putting grace in, in the words that we say and applying what the words of God, you know, to people. That kind of encouragement from the scriptures, the, the Christian encouragement. Um, encouragement is shared with the hopes that it will lift up people's heart towards God. That's, that's what encouragement will lift up, help people to see God clearly and to have that Whoa, this is my God, you know, that expression. It points out um, evidence of the grace of God being alive, and it's, it's, it's happening. You know, that's what it is, to help people see that, that grace is actively happening, and also to help people see that God loves them, and God is working with us, that they are precious, that they are valuable in God's eyes. I and mean, that's encouragement. The New Testament uh, has a lot of the encouragement uh, in the scriptures. Uh, so I just want to focus now on um, how, you know, talk about how do we get uh, wisdom. What about encouragement? How do I grow in being an encouragement to others? Uh, I'd like to share with you a few points, you know. Number one, it's, I think I'm going to get put number one there. Uh, we start everything we do, we start with prayer. Pray for God to make you an encourager. I mean, some, some of us are not born that way, but it doesn't mean that we cannot be. So, something to pray about. If we can pray for wisdom, certainly we can say, God, I pray that I become more like you. You know, that, that Jesus lives in me as an encourager. Ask God to give us this heart that that loves, you know, agapetos, I mean, God himself, that loves others and uh, encourages others, uh, that God will die in us or remove that self-centeredness, that, that life is not just about Burmi, about me, but life is about living in a community of God's people where we value each other as God's people. You know, that, that we see that, that you are. In fact, the Bible even say, esteem others, in Philippians 2, 3, esteem others better than yourself. I mean, that's what, what it says. Uh, that to me is a, it's an amazing thing. So, that's number one. Pray for God to make you a, an encourager. It takes a miracle. It takes, that's what prayer is about. It's depending on God. Number two, make encouragement a, a daily discipline. That's what we read in Hebrews a while ago. Encourage one another daily. So you make that effort. It takes time. So okay, how can who can I encourage? Make encouragement a daily discipline. Uh, for some, it is natural. It, it just you know, some of you are just natural people. I mean, I, I know uh, Barb and Renita. I mean, they're just natural encouragers. That's that's beautiful. Um, so make it a daily um, discipline. Um, perhaps you can even write in a calendar, you know, or people who you want to encourage. Uh, number three, pray for God to show you who to encourage. I mean, there's something to pray about because that uh, God knows. You know, there are times when uh, you may not know, but God knows because His Spirit, He knows the people who are in need. And so, I, you know, God, please show me who to encourage. So, so a person's face or name may come and and then you can give them the encouragement, you know, pray for them, encourage them, and so forth. So, um, one way to do that, that's why we gave you, is this book here, right? 
Uh, you know, the Bible is the most important book in your life. This is the second most important book. <laughs> of course, you know, I'm teasing, but uh, this, this is a tool, you know, this thing we learn, but this is a, a ministry tool. So that's one way. Uh, number four, use scripture, you know, in, in, encouragement. As I mentioned, it's not just... The Bible says you have a good haircut. I mean, that's not, you know, uh, there's something more. There's so much in the Bible that encourages people. Uh, nothing encourages people more deeply than the words of God. I mean, you agree? Yeah. Than just words of men. So make a list of scriptures. Maybe one day some of us here will volunteer and have a list of handouts of scriptures to encourage people. You know, that, that's important. So number number five, I'll just go through this list that I jot down. Uh, be specific in what to say. Um, so be more specific in, you know, in, you know the person's need. Maybe it's a per an encouragement because a person is going through some trials. And you can go through that. So be specific with them. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's very helpful. Uh, number six, pray that God would create a culture of encouragement in our church so that's that's my request that I I hope and pray that in this congregation that is such a culture of encouragement you know here we where we where we care for each other as a church uh, but of course first thing that we used to do is to pray for encouragement for ourselves too uh, so ask God to make our church grace life a community that loves its other. Um, you know, look at the people around you here. These are your brothers and sisters. We are. We are brothers and sisters. Uh, we are all in the same family of God. We, we, we belong to each other. You know, when it says that, hey, you know, uh, we are one body, uh, many members, that means we belong to each other because we belong to God. You know, that's, that's how it is. Uh, somebody says, yeah, you know, in, you know, you've been in the family. Oh, my husband is the head. And the wife says, but I have the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody's important. I don't know why I said that in there. Somebody, I heard that from somebody, you know. Uh, oh, husband is the head and women are the neck. You know, the head follows the neck. <laughs> But we are all important, you know, in the church. We, uh, we are all valuable, and so when we, we look at each other, everybody is important in the church. Uh, so pray that we have this culture and uh, encouragement. Number seven, this is about uh, uh, visiting. To, to encourage people, especially we have people who are not able to come to church. They're homebound members. So why not visit? You know, visiting is not only a ministry that the pastors do, but it is for everybody. I encourage you to, to visit. Now, you don't have to be there, you know, it may be difficult for you to go there, but there is a telephone, there is email, there is texting, you know, all of those visiting. I mean, this is amazing. The power of presence is very important. I mean, when Jesus was going to be confirmed of his messiahship, I mean, isn't that interesting that in, in, a, in a symbolic way that the Father the Holy Spirit, you know, they're all there. You know, the presence that they visited. I mean, they, they came, they showed themselves for people to, to witness. Uh, that, that's wonderful, the, the press, being present. So, I would say, especially with our homebound uh, members, they may not be able to attend church, but they are members of the church. They are very members of the church. Uh, some may need meals, we, you know, some... Uh, they just need the visiting. And the visiting thing is something I feel that we, we can do. Uh, people don't need only prayers, but uh, they need to be connected. You know? It's powerful. I mean, I was reading an article where it says that uh, visiting has become a lost art in churches. You know, everything is social media. Uh, but visiting is, is good. So uh, if we depend only on like, the pastor or the clergy, then we're limited. You know, but let's visit one another. One thing I would appreciate from you too is 
If you notice somebody who is sick or somebody is not there, you know, please tell us because we would not know. I uh, appreciate Mr. Tayas. I mean, Mr. Tayas tells me, updates me, uh, uh, somebody sick, uh, what's uh, <laughs> Natalie Nibergal's mom, right? But, yeah, he's in hospital, but she's better. Yeah, but, but he uh, emails, you know, all, all the time, so this, that helps. So, again, check the uh, directory, this one here, it has the names, and uh, you will find in this directory who are the people close to you? You know, maybe you can visit them, or it doesn't have to be in your house. Maybe invite them for a meal, or you know, have coffee, you know, together in like a small group. Again, it's not just about ourselves, and it's about doing as God wants us to do: to share, to share our lives uh, with other people. Uh, uh, the eighth one, number eight, is uh, look again. Uh, what, what I mean here is you may find certain people that may be difficult to encourage. There might be people that offended us in the past. Uh, they may have certain words that hurt us. Uh, maybe we think that they don't like us. You know, this happens in, in small communities. Um, and so it's difficult to encourage because I don't like that person. But I'd say... Uh, look again, you know, check. I mean, one of the one of the peoples that are most encouraging in the Bible is Barnabas. You know the story of Barnabas, right? Uh, Barnabas is a man of exhortation in the scriptures. Uh, when Paul was called by God, remember, Paul was a terrorist. I mean, in a way, he was killing the Christians. And then he came to church. And so when people saw Paul... You know, you know, it's like having a terrorist come to our place here, and whoa! And then, why is it, it's a it's a person of God? It's now a Christian. So when when they saw Paul, a lot of people probably because they saw him as an evil person, their first reaction is being afraid of that person and wanting to avoid Paul. You know, <coughs> wanting to avoid. But there was a man, Barnabas, who does not re rely on what his eyes can see, you know. He looked at Paul differently. He looked again, and probably God put in his mind that this is one of God's children. That's how, what happened. And so he encouraged him, and Paul was able to come and do the work because there was an encourager. It's okay, Paul. I know we've done all the Robert Paul. No, I've done all this in the past. Okay. But you are a work that God is working. He's working in you right now. And, uh, look at Peter. Peter was one who, who was very impetuous. And he denied Jesus. I mean, there are many things that Peter did. When you see and what you witness in the eyes, oh, you know, you what kind of disciple he is. But Jesus, no matter what, Peter did. Jesus, look again, gave him another chance, another chance, and so many chances. That's God. It doesn't matter what the people may have done, you know, in the past. Uh, the thief on the cross, he was, a, he was a criminal, but when Jesus saw him, he saw this thief from another perspective, you know. I think God wants us to look at, our, at ourselves and look at our brothers and sisters in Christ from another perspective. We, we tend to maybe identify them, oh, they're this kind of people, but God is saying, look again, because I am not done with what I, I'm still working with them. And perhaps it is you that is needed to say good words, you know, work with this, these people. Look again. I mean, do you have a friend that offended you? Look again. You know, through the eyes of Jesus. Do you, is there a member here that you don't like? <laughs> Probably some people don't want to raise their hand. <laughs> Plenty. You know, but I say, consider. Look again. From another perspective. 
did your wife offend you this morning? <laughs> Look again. <laughs> I mean, a lot of us are still in this in, in our marriage, and we have this relationship. We are good testimonies. I'm sure I ask all the other married people here, why are you still married? Because you were. You are willing to look again and again and again, right? It's, it's a, that's what marriage is all about. I mean, it's just giving it another chance. And that's who God is. Look again. And even in our relationship with all kinds of people, give them that chance. Have I offended you? Look at me again. <laughs> I, you know my point. The point is God... God wants us to look at people and even events from His perspective. I mean, there's a scripture in Hebrews 11, one verse, where it says, Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Right? A lot of times we look at people and we make judgments on people based on what we hear, based on what is seen, or even their track record. That's how we look at it. But God is saying, Faith, which is the eyes of faith, is the evidence of things not seen. Oftentimes, the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. Because our sight limits us from being able to look at God, look at it from God's perspective. You know, he, God doesn't remove the problems or even the, the, the behavior of those people. But he can change how we look at them. Because that's the church. We are the church. When, when we look at church history, it is not perfect. Right? I mean, who is perfect among us? I put that behind there. Nobody here. We are all, you know, because of Christ, we are all one together. And I think God desires that. God does not necessarily remove that particular you know, issue, but he can change our perspective. And so to be an encourager, to be helping each other, we have to rise out of that physical vision of judging people based on whatever in the past, but look at it from Christ's perspective. <laughs> and a lot of times they're probably saying, hey, you know, I know I've, I've done bad. I know I have offended you. I know this happened. I know you are not happy. But please understand that Christ is still working with me. You know? And they need our encouragement. They need those, those words. God's people have Jesus living in them. God's people have Jesus' eyes to see those people. God's people have Jesus' words that, that come out. Uh, that's when, Just uh, before church service, I mean, I'd like to read this uh, Judy... Young. I'm going to be a piece of paper here, and she wrote a poem. I'd like to read it to you. That's okay with Judy. Judy, always young. Um, <laughs> she wrote this uh, poem just now, I mean, just a while ago. Kevin gave it to me. Uh, a bit more. I'll be a bit more thoughtful of loved ones here and there, more thoughtful of their feelings. I'll be a bit more fair. I'll value all my friends more and recognize their love. I'll appreciate more fully the gifts from up above. I'll speak a bit more gently and not always speak my mind. I'll keep my mouth and a bit more shut. <laughs> okay. And a bit more kind. I'll work harder at forgiving, even if I don't forget. I'll try not to repeat the things that I so do regret. I'll be a bit more loving so to those, my fellow men, and be a bit more humble. I'll help wherever I can. I'll knuckle down to doing bits of things that I need to hold true. I'll take the time to ask myself, is this what Christ would do? I'll look for bits of love in the beauty that I see, and when the Lord comes to collect, He'll take the bits of me. That's from Judy. Yeah. So that's, that's an encouraging uh, point. So it's, it's all perspective. The perspective of being able to see the church for what it is. 
the church is so loved, the church is given so much favor, um, and God wants us to see that in the same way. And the last one, the last point is, let's get started. <laughs> That's the last point. So, who can you encourage right now? You know, who has blessed you, and maybe you need to thank them. Uh, what spiritual insights can you give? So we can use the time. I mean, we have fellowship. You know, I can already imagine while we're eating there, everybody saying good things to <laughs> people. <laughs> And even nice haircuts. <laughs> so may the Lord, may the Lord bless each and everyone. And I'd like to pray, if, if, if I may, and commission you. Is that okay? We, there is this new ministry in the Graceline congregation. It's called the Ministry of Encouragement. And you are the leader. Right, everybody? So let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for... You, Lord God, being our encourager, the words that came out of our Father in heaven is, this my son in whom I'm well pleased, and, and I know, God, you say the same to everybody in this room. And so, Lord, we bow our heads now, and I pray in the name and by the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you, God, will commission each and every one, Lord, of us here to the work of the Ministry of Encouragement. May we have the genuine love and care for each other. May we pray for each other. May we try to reach out as much as we can and to genuinely love people. It's even those who have been difficult or may have offended us, help us to look again, give them another chance. And another chance, 70 times 7, I said, and be an encourager. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.